presence Hello and welcome. I'm Bonnie Libhart and you're watching Vision Plus here on TVN. I'm so delighted that we have with us uh, Don Brown that some of you do remember meeting him for a moment last week and we just got into a real interesting subject and the time was up. So we wanted to have him back again and let you hear more from him and how he's blessed our lives and I want him to touch your life even more. And he has brought with him uh, someone that is, I believe you, do you call him your spiritual father? Mm -hmm. And uh, moral support and spiritual father and spiritual support. So I'm going to let you introduce Brother Gamlin. This is Brother Harold Gamlin, Lucas Ferry Church of God in Athens, Alabama. And he said that he has the name but not the trade. So that way we can remember <laughs> his name forever. Right. Now all the audience will remember you also. Well, Don, we were telling a story and I want you to recap when you came to the Lord. And then I would like to get into a little bit about some of the things that uh, that I feel very strongly about in spiritual warfare. And, and uh, so I w let's let's recap some things in case some people are watching now that didn't have an opportunity to watch last week how you came to the Lord. Don is a businessman that I've known over the last few years has been, some of you will recognize him as being a person that managed businesses right here in Huntsville. At the moment he lives in Gunnersville and so I want you to hear uh, from a businessman the testimony of how the Lord's touched his life. Tell us how you came to meet the Lord. Well, uh, as we were talking earlier, of course, I've considered myself a 12-year-old Christian and that I was just saved in 1980, January of 1980. Uh, that's when I came to the Lord. And uh, we had started talking about the uh, experience that I had, uh, possibly a visit from an angel that actually witnessed to me. Um, this uh, particular individual that, uh, that I shared that experience with you, uh, a lot of coincidence involved in that. Um, well, let's just recap exactly uh, what happened that day in the restaurant. Of the day in the restaurant? Um, Primarily we, what when he started, to, you went to tell him your story, but as it turns out, right. he told you his story. Yeah, I had gotten him there to uh, uh, try to recruit him into what I was doing, to get him into the, uh, the business that I was involved in. And uh, he wasn't interested in that. He was, a, uh, he was on a mission from the Lord uh, and uh, began to ask me questions about my spiritual life, um, which I didn't really know what a spiritual life was at that time. Uh, asked me if I were a Christian, what I thought about being a Christian. Had he I ever said, wanted I live to in be. America, so of course I'm a Christian. Right, something like that. <laughs> uh, of course I'm a Christian that way. Uh, you're an American. So. But... Um, he began to share with me some things, some uh, some different things that, um, of course, he would share scripture with me, which at the time I, I wouldn't have known if he hadn't have been sharing scripture with me. Uh, but as time went on and I began to learn some things, he was quoting actual scripture to me. And as he was talking to me and beginning to ask me things about my life, he would say things and tell me things about certain aspects of my life, certain areas that uh, I knew that only the Lord could know. And the only way that he could be sharing these things with me was... Only the Lord could know? Right. Some, what are some of the things? Um, Bonnie, I, I can't give you a specific... Okay, it doesn't matter. It's been so long, mm -hmm. uh, that 12 years. Those things, uh, what happened next okay. sort of... Made uh, everything else Made everything else sort of a blur mm -hmm. because as I was speaking with him and he was asking me these things and sharing the scripture verses with me, I began, as I was looking at him, which I usually, when I'm speaking with somebody, I will usually look them just right in the eyes, eye to eye contact. And as I was looking to him, uh, speaking with him, I began to be aware of a change. Um, and it was, suddenly it was like he was no longer in the room or there was, it was like I wasn't in this particular room anymore. But here was this individual uh, and it, there was, I was only aware of eyes, and then as the eyes lifted up, it was just like a brilliant light um, that was looking back down at me and was speaking to me, and <clears throat> it was as if instead of this individual sharing with me, it was like I was being spoken to from this presence. 
It's extremely bright light. Uh, the main thing that I could remember as far as distinctive was the eyes. The eyes were all, always um, the most prominent thing and they would be uh, looking down at me and I was just in awe at what I was looking at <clears throat> and it was only momentarily and this had gone, went away and I'm sure I must have been sitting there like I was in shock and this individual reacted to me. Uh, he obviously could tell that I had seen something and I said, you're not going to believe what I have, what I've just been, I must be seeing things. He said, no, you're, you're looking into the eyes of Jesus. Uh, he is speaking to you and he has this uh, offer then. And he began to share the uh, plan of salvation with me. And, uh, and that's a pretty uh, convincing sales pitch. Uh, I would say most any individual in that uh, situation with that much evidence of that there was a uh, Christ and there was a, uh, uh, a different way of life, you would certainly buy the package. And uh, I, I, I did. Uh, I accepted the Lord. Um, and through this individual, it was like he, I was his uh, assignment then. He discipled me then at that time. We spent many nights from, from that day forth. We, as it turns out, he lived next door to me. And the, you didn't know that before I, this? I, not before that. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know where he lived. But as it turns out, he was living in the apartment next door to me. Mm. And so we were able to, at night, uh, we would uh, go in and uh, we'd open me and uh, a friend of mine, a lady friend of mine, uh, that I was seeing at the time, uh, she also got saved. Uh, and the two of us and he and his wife would sit around the table with our Bibles open and it was like an intense seminar then until sometimes two and three in the morning, just sharing out of the Word. We would read different scriptures and share the, the verses and they would share with us um, different stories from their spiritual pilgrimage. Uh, he told me of a time when he had gone on a 40-day fast and how the Lord had used him in many different ways, in, in particular in uh, dealing with people who had been possessed with uh, demons. Um, and this was a, an individual that you just knew spent uh, a very large portion of his time in prayer and praying uh, getting in the spirit and having the Lord work through him and he told me of these different things and here I am I had had no Christian background or no Christian experience and immediately I'm being bombarded with all these things these spiritual things and this talk about fasts and uh, demons mm -hmm. and casting out demons uh, he told me of an experience that he had with his little girl they had two little girls and uh, his little girl had fell at the apartment complex where they were when they first moved to Huntsville. And this is interesting in the way the Lord works in this. He lived, actually lived in Mobile. And uh, he said one day the Lord spoke to him and told him to go to Huntsville. Said, Pack up your things and go to Huntsville. And he and his wife were just, they were that spiritual and they were that dedicated to the Lord that they just would follow the Lord's leading. And he said, like Abraham, we packed up our tent and we moved to Huntsville. And uh, when they, um, the first place that they moved to, they had, a, they had to move from there because of this particular situation. Their little girl had uh, fell and broken her arm. And it was a visible break. And some of the people at the apartment witnessed this. And Larry Herlong was this gentleman's name. And Larry said that the little girl, he came to the little girl's side and could see that it was. And he prayed over that break and ask her, did she believe that Jesus could heal her arm? And he said before there, and he prayed and prayed in Jesus' name that she be healed. And before their eyes, the little girl was healed. Mm -hmm. And her, I mean, she got up and she was fine and went on about what she was doing. And the people at the apartment complex turned them in for um, child abuse because they didn't take the little girl to the doctor mm -hmm. because they had witnessed that the, the little girl's arm was broken. And so, they had some problems and had to, consequently had to leave that apartment complex and that's when they moved to the apartment next door to me. So that's how he had, uh, and I, but I had never met them until the day that he had witnessed to me. Um, 
Another strange coincidence in that is that when he, the job that he got was in the, the, uh, the business that I was working for was in Parkway City Mall, and the job that he got was in the business next door to the business that I was working in. But that business... You can get away from me when the Lord right. has you in the palm of his hand here, there. That's exactly it. Uh, but we didn't come in contact while I was still working for that business. That business filed bankruptcy and closed that store while he was working there. And it was after that that I went back. But I had met him um, just in passing, and I knew that he worked there. I didn't know where he lived at that time. But... Um, and you had some other experiences from the Lord, too, didn't you? Some visions or things that happened to you. Yes. Um, what were those, Don? Uh, after that, of course, there was some, like I said, it was like an intense uh, uh, time that we spent in the Word. And so uh, I was ready to go out and conquer the world for, the, for Christ uh, and witness to everybody that I could and Every opportunity that I would get to talk to people about the Lord, then I, I usually would. And uh, I had this one instance where I confronted an individual. We were talking, and uh, I won't use names or in, in this. I don't, I don't feel comfortable in doing that as far as to who this was. Um, we were sitting in an office, and I was talking to this individual, and the subject came up about uh, Christianity, or me being a Christian, and the comment was made that they just wanted to make it on the back row uh, of the, in the gates of heaven. They just want to make it so they just barely got in. And uh, I knew from no older a Christian than I was, and I was less than six months at this time, I knew that there was a little more to it than that, that you couldn't count on just making it in right at the last minute. And so I was speaking to this individual and trying to share with them uh, how the Lord had worked in my life. And as I began to witness to them, I had a similar experience to the experience that I had initially in my conversion in that in looking to this person's eyes, there suddenly became a, um, a presence, but this time it was completely different than the first time except for the eyes. I could see the eyes and the eyes looking at me and staring back at me. And as I, the more that I spoke about the things of the Lord and sharing a testimony with this individual, the greater this thing became. And it grew like a dark presence, like nothing I had ever seen, uh, nothing I've ever seen in a movie, like a demon or any, any of this that they're portrayed now. Uh, it wasn't anything like uh, that you would imagine. It was just a very hideous dark, black, almost hairy um, looking thing that showed itself to me as I was speaking to her. And if I was a little startled at first and I, this presence continued to present itself and so uh, I did the only thing I, I, I thought, well, Lord, if you're letting me see this in the spiritual realm, and you're letting Satan be this close to me, then you have to be right next to me, and he can't touch me. There's nothing that he can do to me. And so I did the only thing I knew to do. I rebuked this presence. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. I command you to leave. And this thing withdrew and went back into this individual. And, uh, of course, now this person is looking at me like I'm crazy and saying, what? Or did you see, or what are you doing, or what is the meaning of this? And I tried then to explain it to her, but then to also to try to witness to her some as well. And uh, each time that I would start back down a road of, uh, an inroad to witness to the person, this presence would present itself again. And uh, that, uh, that situation was left unresolved. I really didn't know how to uh, culminate that. Uh, obviously there was some sort of an oppression. I don't know that there was uh, possession, but there was certainly uh, a presence there that didn't want to hear what I had to say. And it was like, this person belongs to me. And, you know, and uh, I think what happens in that is that the individual allows, gives that 
presence the uh, space. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have to be willing to give it up. And so, uh, remember, she wasn't real, re she wasn't receptive to the things that I was saying. Of the Lord. Of the Lord, um, in that sense. And in here, it was like, <clears throat> I talked to um, my pastor at the time, which was not Brother Gammon at that time, uh, but I discussed it with him, um, and he had never had an experience like that. I haven't talked to very many people who have. Had but you that had type it again, experience. didn't you? With a, a situation where the, a presence came. Yes, I had one other time uh, that uh, I had a similar experience. Uh, but this time I was, I, I used a little better judgment in that I didn't uh, verbally attack it and, and uh, let everybody in the room know that that was what was going on. But there was uh, another situation, and it was similar to that. And this time there was a, it was at night and the lights were on, and there was almost a, uh, um, two things were significant about that time. They, it was the lights seemed to dim mm -hmm. and the air in the room chilled. Chilled. It was like it got Very cold in the room. Inside. And mm -hmm. here again, I was speaking to an, I was witnessing. And uh, this individual, um, I became uncomfortable and this individual can sense that there was a problem and we discussed it, but I didn't confront the presence or, or whatever it is. Um, but that's those are the only times that I've had mm -hmm. that type of situation. So. Brother Gammon, how do you, would you suggest people fight spiritual warfare? You know, how do you uh, fight those things that come across your path like that? Well, I think, first of all, <clears throat> you have to know, you have to have confidence. He told Joshua, he said, you be strong. And strength comes from our joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I don't think you can be depressed. I don't think you can be down and have the, the joy. Then he said, be very courageous. So you have to have confidence into whom you're praying to and the confidence that he does answer your prayer. You have to be in good standing with the Lord, I think this. And then, uh, because uh, you told, you know, Jesus told the uh, well, in the New Testament, not Jesus, but he told them in the New Testament. Uh, Paul, uh, when they came out against the seven sons of Siva, you know, he said, uh, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? So many times, if we're not under the authority of Jesus Christ, then the forces of evil do laugh at us. But when we get our, when we're strong and very courageous, we go against those. Uh, then in the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then this is a name that is above every name that has been named. And it's like you go to the store and you buy something for someone in that name. You go in, in their name, you buy that. Since that's what Jesus said. He said, you take my name, go throughout your life, and you buy things for the kingdom of God. Not in a selfish motive, but in, and that's the way you rebuke the enemy, and that's the way you uh, defeat that enemy and that power. How do you get very strong and courageous? Uh, strength, again, I think, comes through um, being um, joyful, continuously joyful. Don't, 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 uh, the wife speaks to the husband sometimes and steals the husband's joy. Now, the quit preaching start meddling. He started it. <laughs> <laughs> I the, guess the, I've done that once or twice the, in 30 years. And vice versa, the husband <laughs> to the, the children, yeah. the employee to the employer, uh, uh, when you get in the traffic, uh, don't, don't, let, don't let the enemy steal your joy. Keep your joy. Always keep your joy. This is the type of thing I'm speaking of. You know, always, uh, not a forced joy, not a facade, not a veneer that's on the front, but a real consolation, a real deep sense of that Jesus is with me. Uh, what can go wrong? All things are going to work out together, you see, to the good. And nothing can go wrong. So this is the joy. It's a deep, it's a joy that is unspeakable. It's a joy that you can't explain. This is what runs. And you have to maintain that joy. I think you have to obtain it, and then you have to maintain it, you see. Now, I've always wondered, because my son used to say when he was about 12, I want to be a part-time preacher and a truck driver. Never was sure, except maybe TV you might have watched a truck driving show. But, uh, but I've always wondered how you go from age 12 or someday become a preacher. How did it happen in your life? 
I was raised <clears throat> in a Christian home. I always carried to uh, church, and um, but I had problems with my faith until I was about age 33. I could not. Um, I felt that uh, when I got saved, that something traumatic would happen. You know, I felt like it did, but. Uh, it was not that way, and uh, I continued struggling with this, you know. Uh, it's like uh, I would have times that I would feel like I was saved, other times I wouldn't. But there was a struggle that I couldn't overcome. Until on a particular night, I made up my mind that I was going to find God if He was there. I was going to, I knew that 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 all the things that I had been taught, I had not experienced them. I had, I, had the, I had the faith in my mind, but I didn't have it in my soul being. And so uh, as I began to search for God, seek for Him, then I made a peculiar statement that may seem blasphemous to some, but to me it was where I found God. And I said, God, I understand that my teachings, that someday I'm going to have to stand before you, I'm going to have to meet you face to face. And I don't know of my experience with you, but we're going to point back to this night on the calendar. And I say, Lord, I'd, I'd done everything I knowed to do to find you. And at that moment, there was that change in my life. That's what the Lord had been wanting me to do all the time, is lean on Him, not lean on something of tradition something that I had had in the past or some he wanted me to lean on him and from that moment on then I I took anchor I took anchor right there and uh, never did uh, depart from it how did you get interested in the aspect of spiritual warfare that particular part of it after being a pastor finding so many people who are continually defeated they're defeated in moral impurities. They don't intend to indulge, but they do. And they're defeated in bad habits. They're de de defeated in alcohol. Defeated. They come and they give their heart and life to God, but then they're defeated again in um, uh, dope and all kind of uh, things. And this is what really got me. Into were you it. counseling with people and yes, you could see yes. that well they did they were truly gave their life to the Lord but they had com they would go on and commit adultery or they right. would go on and get into drugs or drinking or some of the uh, gossip or whatever it is that was their weakness right. and it would and so how did you help them go from my mind says I want to give my life to the Lord but Practically, it is not an easy thing to do. How do you help to pray people through that, Brother Gamble? The, um, the book of Ephesians is our spiritual warfare handbook. Yes. So um, if you will memorize, put it into you. Jesus said, now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Many times we go by what we uh, want to know and that doesn't work. But, but, but whether, you, it, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, if you will keep running the Word through you, now you're clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. So put yourself to sleep with Scripture. Awaken yourself with Scripture. Write it on a little three by five card. Put it in your pocket. Carry it with you. Uh, he told the children of Israel, God did. He said, you rehearse it when you get up in the morning. Write it on the it. doorpost. Write it on your doorpost. He said, uh, write it on your front. Uh, uh, rehearse it when you get up. Rehearse it when thou walkest in thy way. When thou sittest in thy house. These are the times when you rehearse. And, and it will, it displaces thoughts of other things and becomes power and strength. And, and this is where you defeat the enemy. Brother Don, I think that, or Don Brown, I'm calling you brother now, why not? I think that Brother Gamling, just all you said, I've really been blessed by him being here. Thank he is, you very much. He has much. really been a blessing to me. Yes. 
And Don Brown, Brother Gambling, Bonnie Libhart, and you are watching Vision Plus, and bless your heart for watching, and I'm glad you did. Read Ephesians, uh, the last chapter 6, especially verse 12, for we wrestle not with against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And that is our victory is when we overcome them, and we do because Jesus overcame them at the, gra at the cross. And when he arose from the grave, Thank you for being with us. Bless your heart for watching. Thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is 